Hi, I'm Jeff Ogan of Sport Dad Sports Photography. In this video, I'm going to show you the settings that I have for my preferences in Photo Mechanic to maximize the efficiency of my workflow. To make it easier for you, you can simply download the file that is linked in the show notes and you can import that into Photo Mechanic so that your settings look like my settings. If you find this video of value, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Hope you find it of value and thanks for watching. Let's dive right into Photo Mechanic to show you how I've set up my preferences. To set preferences, go to Photo Mechanic Plus or Photo Mechanic, depending on the version you're using, and select Preferences. I'm not going to go through and show you every one of the settings that I've made uh, in Photo Mechanic, but what I'm going to do is point out the ones that I recommend you change um, that I've found to be the most valuable for my uh, efficiency in my workflow. So first thing, on mount of camera disk, show ingest dialog. So that means when you put the memory card into the card reader, it's just going to open up the ingest dialog. I don't want it to start opening up contact sheets because that can get messy if you're doing multiple ingests. When you come down to color classes, you can see here that in my contact sheet, a number of the images have color class ratings. These are the standard ones that come as default in Photo Mechanic. If I click on this lightning bolt, I can make changes here. For example, I can use the same color class ratings as is used in Capture One. If I am using Lightroom, for example, here are the, changes, here are the color class ratings in Adobe Lightroom. But let's say you want to make a little bit more personal. So I want to call this one Keeper, and a two is better and a three might be something that I would put on Instagram. And then I would come up to back to this lightning bolt and hit save and give it a name and I'm going to call it Sport Dad Demo and hit save. So now I come back here and you can see that I've got that if I want to show say the, the default here you go, and then go to the Sport Dad demo. There you see I've got my color class ratings. I actually want to come back here and get rid of this other one that I don't use. So here I want to get rid of this Sport Dad demo that I just did. So here I'm showing you actually how to manage the, the snapshots that you've created. So manage snapshot, come in here, move to trash, and it's gone. So now I come back here. I'm using my Sport Dad color class, and away we go. So now let's take a look at the contact sheet preferences. As you can see over here, I use a lot of uh, folders, so I want to be able to see the folder underneath the image name. So what I've done here is I've changed the default from file name only. Let's see what that looks like. There's just the file name. So I want to come back to preferences and change this to file name plus one label. So I've already populated it to show folder as a, the folder variable and the folder variable would pick up this information for example and now you see that I've got the image name and then the corresponding folder that it's in. But let me switch to a different example and show you where that might become important. So here I've got a UFC Fight Night so here are the individual folders for each one of the fights, for example. So I'm going to close these, and I'm going to come back, and I want to look at the all all the take the entire take from that night. Again, these are just sample images. So I'm going to come back here to preferences, and then I'm going to say preference uh, file name plus two labels. And the second label that I would use in this case would be let's say photographer, and because we're going to have multiple photographers at a UFC fight night. So now what I've done is I've shown um, here, I'm going to go by folder type or folder name again. So here there's fight zero, which is the pre-fight, and it was taken by Laney. And then here fight zero taken by Jeff Vogan, fight one taken by uh, Mick O, for example. So there we have in the preferences, the ability to set multiple labels to show you the important information. Maybe you want to have it by photographer or by which camera body was used. So I'm not going to go through every one of the examples, but this just shows you where that information would get changed. 
So back here to um, showing you the file name and the folder number underneath. And where you change that is right here. So moving over to files, uh, the one thing I recommend here, never warn when deleting images, deselect that. It's always a good idea to have uh, Photo Mechanic warn you before you accidentally uh, delete some files. Over to launching, again, not much here. Uh, this is where you specify the external editor. Um, so I use Adobe Lightroom. How you would specify that is you come here, you point at the application, and hit open and you're going to see a warning here that Photo Mechanic and Lightroom don't behave well together sometimes. It's Lightroom that doesn't like images uh, being sent to it in a certain way. Still works uh, usually but uh, sometimes you'll just get this forewarning from um, uh, from Photo Mechanic. Okay next on the list is preview. I suggest turning this one off, the wraparound. Um, if you are editing a bunch of pictures and you get to the end and you cursor to the next image, if it takes you, if you're clicked here like this, it'll take you back to the first image. If you don't notice, you may end up accidentally editing the same images over and over again. Also, for the sake of efficiency, automatically advance to the next photo when any of these three things are changed. So if you're changing the a tag or the color class or the rating number, you want it to automatically advance to the next slide. Not a big deal when you are editing a half a dozen pictures, but if you're editing hundreds or even thousands of images, every keystroke that you can save will save you time. Next is caching. Not a lot to um, point out here. Uh, you can tinker with the amount of memory that you have assigned here. I have a lot of memory in this uh, computer so I have a fairly hefty size of uh, memory cache. Um, other than that the, the defaults are pretty straightforward here. Next is the render cache. Um, I recommend enabling the raw rendering. I think that was recommended to me by the folks at uh, Camera Bits. And the one that I use is the Adobe DNG Converter, and I've pointed to the application here. Um, you can also tinker with the amount of render cache size, and that's going to depend on how much available memory you have in your computer. Now moving on to color management. If you have profiled your monitor, then you can specify that profile here. Otherwise, uh, Photo Mechanic will just use the default for that particular monitor. I live in Canada, so I'm using the metric system, so I specify my distance in kilometers. If you're in one of the three countries in the world that are still using the imperial system, you can specify miles. I'm going to leave mine at uh, kilometers. Last but not least, accessibility. When I am looking at my ITPC uh, fields, I have upscaled the caption field to 120%. So when I'm in the field and shooting and have to do captioning, I'm going to be using my laptop with its smaller screen and I may not have my glasses with me. So making this uh, a little bigger makes it a little easier for me to see. Single key shortcuts, I prefer the 0 to 5 star rating as opposed to the 0 8 color classes. I just find it a little bit more logical to me. Um, rating a, an image 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 as opposed to yellow, orange, red, green, blue. Um, just a personal preference for me. And then lastly, something I uh, found a while ago here, ask when quitting Photo Mechanic. So if this is clicked when you quit Photo Mechanic, Photo Mechanic is going to come up with a screen that says, are you sure? Um, yes, I'm sure, but I don't want to have to answer it every single time, so I turn that off. And there you have the preferences settings that I use at Sport Dad Sports Photography. I hope that was helpful to you.